Hello, welcome to Parsha with Marika. So this time of year is so weird because we just came off of a full month of Jewish holidays. It's almost like we had this incredible high that now it's kind of like, well, what's next? I guess it's just back to reality. For some of us, we tried to take off as many days as we could and it felt like a literal month vacation and it's kind of sad. But what I love about the Jewish holidays and the Parsha, when we read the weekly Torah portion every, you know, throughout the year, is we're back to Bereshit. We're back to the beginning, the first Parsha in the entire Torah. And Bereshit is one of the most powerful Parshas that we have. And it starts out, Bereshi bara elokim et hashemayim et haaretz. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now that is one of the most controversial lines that we have. It's the line that creates the tension between science and religion. Religion and religion. Is man the ultimate creator? Is God the ultimate creator? Now, I'm not going there, but it opens up for a lot of discussions on many, many different topics. What I do want to talk about instead is something profound that I heard from my one of my favorite rabbis, the late Rabbi Jonathan Sachs, in his book, Judaism's Life-Changing Ideas. And that is that when God creates in Bereshi, it's all the same. Let there be light. Let there be separation between the heaven and the earth. Let there be fish and, you know, on and on and on. And after all these things, it said, and it was good. But when it comes to mankind, it's very different. God says, let us make man in our image. First of all, why is it let us and not let there be, right? What, 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 why the difference? And who's the us? I thought it was just God. Sachs explains that in the Talmud, the answer given is that the us is the angels and that he was consulting with the angels on whether or not to create humanity. Why would we even be a question mark? Why would that even be up for a debate? What's fascinating is that humanity is the only thing that doesn't follow 100% the rules of instinct. We are part science, but we are also part metaphysical. There's something in us that allows us to break the rules of science. Trees follow their rules, plants, and everything around us is abiding by the law of natural order. And somehow we are a little bit outside of that, those laws and those rules. Sachs makes an amazing claim that the only thing besides God that's able to destroy is mankind. And it's true. In next week's Parsha, we're gonna have the flood of Noah. God destroys the world saves a few people and a couple animals here and there. But overall, you know, he destroys everything. And after that destruction, God says, I will never destroy the world again. But there's something left out. God never says that humanity can't destroy the world. We have the power to create, but we also have the power to destroy. That's part of our gift. It's a blessing and it's a curse. God created something that was outside of these laws and these realms that everything else listens to. And it's a huge responsibility. And Sack says that the whole Torah is not based on our faith in God. It's God's faith in man or mankind or women. It's God's faith in humanity. The Torah is the book about us and our beginnings and our origins and we're not created perfect. We're not created with an easy task. 
That's why it's let us make and not let this be. We were created with some type of dichotomy and we're able to do things that other things in nature can't do, which of course we can see from all of our technological, medical, and just advances across the board. And that's our mission. It's not to be perfect, but it's to constantly know that we can do better. To know that we, that God has faith in us, that despite not knowing 100% where we lie sometimes on things, we can always come back and make the right choices. That we will be creators, not destroyers. And that's amazing to me. And that's why we restart Bereshi now. That's why after all the Jewish high holidays, God's saying, I know you had a month off. Or I know that there are some of you that only go to shul once a year. You only fast once a year. You only pray once a year. You only think about something more than this life once a year. And that's okay. I get it. It's very confusing. I didn't make this a simple task. But I hope after this month or this day or however you utilize this time that we had the high holidays that we just ended, that you realize there's a restart. I still have faith in you. I still have faith that you're going to be a creator in your life and in other people's lives, that you're going to make good decisions. You're going to be a little bit nicer this year. You're not going to be a destroyer. You're not going to try and hurt other people's feelings. You're not, you're going to be a little bit more honest in your business. You're going to be nicer to yourself. You're maybe going to want to start a family. You're maybe going to want to start a new endeavor. You're going to make a difference. That's what being a creator is, that you're creating space for something else. And that's the restart right now when we read Bereshi. That's the purpose. Not only if, if God has faith in us, then all the more so we should have faith in ourselves and that it's never too late to have a new beginning and that we should never, ever give up. Because as long as you're living and breathing, you have a purpose and you have a choice that you can make every single day. So I want to wish everybody a Shabbat Shalom. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, like this video, and looking forward to restarting this year and to create new content for all of you.